awesome, awesome. Okay. Right. Last week's, uh, last week, last month's creative challenge, we've got um, some random items from the brain and the search history of Tim Elliott. Um, and this one's called Making Headlines. So it says we've got five minutes. Um, that might be a bit long. I'll, I'll wing it. It will minimum of three minutes, maximum of five minutes, depending how you're getting on. What you've got to do is write a newspaper headline and the little caption underneath no word count is necessary connecting these three things so just for confirmation if you were not looking at the screen or a little short sighting there's a donkey a cake and a pair of sunglasses right a donkey a cake and a pair of sunglasses are our topic of the day to do a creative challenge i'm just going to get a timer up so i'm not just winging it with my mind so you want to create a little headline and a caption of what an art, uh, a newspaper article is about, connecting those three things. You've got five minutes starting now. Go, people. And we've got to keep it clean. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Brownie points for not cleanness. If anybody is, um, is, is you know, sensitive nature, um, I can't mute us, maybe, at the end. Um, should be good. That is a cheery looking donkey as well. I'm very pleased with the donkey photo. <clears throat> Look at you all studious. I have to learn how to do background music on Zoom. About a minute done. I'll have people shout them out at the end that were some funny ones, I imagine. Oh, there you go. You can tell we have pro videographers in the house. That would be <laughs> <a computer. laughs> Cool, we're coming up to a minute and a half, so kind of halfway. You're all looking kind of studious still. I'm going to take the stop sharing after three minutes. This is easy for creative writers. You can you can draw a picture, yeah. Like a cartoon, <laughs> mate, yeah. So we got one minute we'll do one minute left because otherwise it's a long time to wang around in it. I, I imagine Sibby would have uh, would have nailed it, not being a crier and stuff. No 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 pressure, Sibby. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Coming up to the last 30 seconds, people, and then I'll, I'll, I'll rejoin the people and we can now share our comedy creative headlines. Three seconds, two, one, boom. There we go. I'm calling it. I'm calling it, kids. I'm calling it, kids. So, entertain me, people. What have we got? Who's Sit your hand up if you got one. Anybody? Go on, Jenny. Unmute yourself. Share your headline. Well, mine's not funny or rude. Okay. <laughs> um, I went for more literal. Um, so uh, Jenny celebrates her birthday on Derbyshire's first sunny day in two weeks because a female donkey is called a Jenny. My name is Jenny. Ah. And birthday on Monday. Oh, well, happy birthday <laughs> for the future times. Happy birthday for future. Anybody else got one? Go on, Elisa. I will in the dark. Yeah. yeah, um, I just put a uh, bachelor party goes arrive with donkey eating sunglasses. 
Ah, yeah. I think I've been to that one, which was good. Awesome. Thank you for chipping in. Anybody else? Mr. Dawes in the hat? Go on, Mr. Dawes. I went, uh, Seaside Donkey celebrates retirement in style. Ah, that is a nice one, actually. I can imagine that. So, maybe did you put your hand up? I just put, Sunkissed Donkey has his cake and eats it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's, that's very smart. I like that. Has his cakes and eat it. Right. Awesome. Thank, now we're a bit warmed up and stuff. I shall, I shall check, double check. Nobody else is coming in. That's fine. Right. We shall proceed with the normal chat. I'm going to share my screen again. Here we go, folks. We'll skip over this now because we don't need it. So, Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Creative Mornings. Uh, if you've not been before, I know I, there's a few faces on there I don't I don't recognise, so you may not have been before. Creative Mornings is a global breakfast lecture series that happens in 67 countries around the world, about 215 different cities. And no matter where you are around the world, we all talk about the same topic, right? So we have a global theme every month. More on this month's theme later on. And, and, and global speaker. So we've got a few messages from our global sponsors because we can't run a global event series without our global sponsors. So I've got a few messages from them. The first one is MailChimp, which has um, been our, was our first ever official partner and it's been with us right, right from the beginning. So they've um, got a new thing. They're looking for some... Um, new reading material i'll read the message here we go looking for some fresh reading material courier media is a bi-monthly magazine and newest member of the mailchimp family it delivers real stories insights and more to help you work better live smarter and be happier you can sign up at couriermedia.com slash sign up i'm going to put all these links in the chat as well but mailchimp have been doing some amazing stuff recently they they used to be just a um, email platform, but now they've branched out into being a whole marketing platform, like a lower end HubSpot. It's actually really good for the money, for, for tens of pounds a month. It's actually a really good platform. So big up to MailChimp, our global partner. Um, next up we have WordPress. Everybody knows what WordPress.com. It's our official web partner for the whole of Creative Mornings. And their message is they've got, and own your own content series, right? So our beloved own your content series is back for an encore for season three. Um, we're revisiting their favorite insights to learn various ways they can honor work by owning your own content. Um, we've got, especially in the face of uncertainty, we'll also be bringing generous loads of webinars and timely resources to complement your, your thing. You can find all this on wordpress.com. It's a really good little content series that will help you going through there. Um, I've noticed you've got a bit of um, background noise. If we could, uh, if you're not muted, can you just mute while we're speaking, just for a bit of echoey stuff? Um, it will be fine for the video. Right, next up is Basecamp. If you remember in March when, when me, Rob and Matt Davis were the only ones attending uh, Creative Mornings, Derby, because we just about entered lockdown. I think it was the same day we pretty much entered lockdown. Basecamp joined as a global partner. So they had a, a, an interesting start or a really well-timed start because the world went to remote working, which is kind of Basecamp's thing. So they got a little message for us as well. It feels great to get an email from someone you care about or a newsletter you enjoy. Hey is a new email service made by Basecamp. It's kind of like Gmail, but carefully designed to make your inbox a nice place to be. To get on the list, you have to email I want at hey.com or visit hey.com to tell Basecamp how you feel about email. It could be a love story or any story. Invites will begin on the 15th of June. Now, a couple of, a couple of my friends have got hey, uh, hey.com as an email system and they say it's amazing. So if you're after a new kind of email delivery client, hey.com is probably the one to do. So just before our main speaker as i said in the beginning creative mornings has a global theme every month and this month's theme is 
uh, insecure. So it comes with uh, an introductory paragraph. Ignite a small dose of courage and fiercely protect its flame. Commit to breaking one limiting belief at a time. And this um, illustration and this topic was picked by a Louisville chapter over in the States. And it's by Rachel Sinclair, who illustrated the theme. And it's brought to us by WordPress.com, our global partner. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand over to our, our speaker for the day, Sibby Spencer. So um, welcome to all of you. Um, it's really wonderful to be here today to talk on the theme of insecure. Um, it's quite surreal. Um, oh, firstly, before I get going, am I looking at you now? <laughs> Tim, am I actually yeah. looking at you? Yeah, just checking. Yeah, we've got Nick your slides, you're good. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so I was thinking how surreal it is actually since um, I introduced myself to Tim, um, I think it was around January time, and said that I'd like to do this talk um, just because of how much life has changed. Um, we obviously all had no idea um, what, what life would be like um, in June. Um, I'll just introduce myself. I've been to a few creative mornings, uh, really enjoyed it. This is obviously quite different. Um, we were all on little screens and not able to have a coffee together. Well, we sort of are, but virtually. Um, so as well as being a mum, which is actually my main career at the moment, um, I'm first and foremost a writer. Um, I love writing poetry. Um, I've got my own blog and um, my first novel, The Heart Ladder, was published in 2016. Um, I've always been a writer, but I haven't always had the confidence to introduce myself as one, um, which is probably insecurity. <laughs> um, <clears throat> these days, I, I do run my own business um, called Right Now with Sibby, and I offer writing and creativity booster courses for um, people who are creatively stuck. Um, and at the same time, <clears throat> I'm trying to write my second novel and also a non-fiction work about finding happiness, but I'm saying attempting because um, I've got two young, um, lively boys at home <laughs> at the moment. So it's uh, slow progress. Um, I'm sure a lot of you can identify with this. Um, you know, if you work, if you work from home, a lot of you are working from home anyway. Um, so um, the word insecure has um, a twofold meaning. So one, lacking in self-confidence, and two, exposed to danger or risk. So in general terms, um, I expect that even the most self-assured of us have experienced, a, you know, both a lack of <clears throat> confidence and um, a feeling of being at risk over the past few months. Um, we've been facing something completely unprecedented in our lives, something that no one can really prepare for. Um, an unknown quantity, you know, a period of history that will be talked about for generations. And in my mind, it's almost akin to perhaps to wartime for older parents or grandparents. Um, you know, we can never, we, we will never truly know what that was like. We can look back though and see the spirit of togetherness um, when united in a fight against a terrible foe. And we've seen that in the face of coronavirus too. So how might many of us combat general feelings of insecurity pre-lockdown? So perhaps you're someone who feels more secure when you, you lead an ordered life full of routines, predictable and dependable. Or maybe you throw yourself into your work, which gives you a sense of achievement. Or you, you help and care for others, which gives you a sense of purpose. You may feel more secure and confident when you socialise with your friends or you might rely on a certain amount of me time to build feelings of security and combat anxiety. Or maybe just a hug from your mum will do it. Many, if not all of these everyday constructs could have been disrupted in your life during this period of lockdown. The tapestry of conditions and situations that we as human beings are now facing is rich and stark and as such feelings of insecurity, anxiety and fear may well have increased. 
However, despite the wide range of situations um, different people are dealing with, there is something that binds us all together, creativity. And I don't refer here only to people like you who work in a creative field or those who identify with labels such as writer, designer, artist, dancer, singer, actor, potter, sculptor, etc. The list goes on. Um, I'm talking actually about everyone because I, I believe that creativity is in our very flesh and bones and in, in our pores, you know, it's in our genetic makeup. And all of us, every single one, you know, have it if we know how to access it. And we can see that many people have been drawing on their creativity in order to connect with others through lockdown. You know, there's been singing, families singing together, people making up silly songs, um, people producing comedy sketches, dances on TikTok, people sharing art on Facebook. Um, there's really been, a, you know, a, re a, real <clears throat> a real sort of rise in people expressing themselves in that way. And in fact, I think that creativity can be um, anything that actually allows us to express ourselves purely in the act of creating something. You know, when we put love into something, um, when the creating of it brings us joy and in sharing it, we can bring joy to others. It's intertwined with true expression of ourselves and an acceptance and a celebration of ourselves, our true selves. And if we have the courage to lead our lives by following our passions and our instincts and our gut, um, then we're tapping into that magic, which is creativity, because actually we're playing an active role in creating our lives as we want them to be. We're dreaming of things um, and then making them happen. Just as when we take part in a creative pursuit, we imagine the thing that we want to create and then we make it, which is magic. But of course, <clears throat> sharing the fruits of your creative labor can be a risky business and can knock your confidence. It can trigger feelings of insecurity because it's such a personal thing. And we all have what we term limiting beliefs, which are bound up with insecurity. These might be beliefs that we've picked up from others or invented ourselves um, about our abilities, our credibility, our talent or our self-worth and these beliefs um, we often form as children um, or teenagers or even as as young adults and they attach onto your psyche and they stick like glue and Theodore Roosevelt said that comparison is the thief of joy when we are looking at other people's success <clears throat> and comparing it with our own our confidence can really suffer and the limiting beliefs clap their hands in delight as they get to have their way. And personally, although I've done a lot of work to release mine, and I'll share a few methods of how to free yourself um, from limiting beliefs at the end of this talk. I still have a fair few. Um, but writing, I have to say, um, has always been something I felt confident with and something that's actually enhanced my well-being. So I guess it's no surprise that I've ended up carving a career out of it. But I do wonder if this inner confidence with writing is partly due to the nature of it as a creative outlet. For example, writers can put something out there and remain anonymous, whereas singers or actors are present, bodily at least, in a live performance. Um, author Toni Morrison sums it up perfectly here. Um, she says, in a musical score, if you're singing or you're playing an instrument on stage in public and you hit a wrong note, you can't say oops and leave the stage. You have to make something out of that error, <clears throat> do a really powerfully creative thing. If it's public, you have to have that ability, that gift to make a mistake look creative. With writing, you can always scratch out the knowledge. You write and erase and do it over. So even so, when you put your work out there as a writer, it's inevitable that long-held limiting beliefs will rear their ugly heads. You can guarantee it. When my novel was published um, and in the public domain, I went through a few limiting beliefs. What if people think it's crap? What if they think it's about me? 
what if they don't like me after reading it? Um, because fear of rejection is, is quite a big one for me, probably for a lot of people. Um, I remember speaking to um, a relative on my husband's side after she'd read my novel. Um, and I stupidly asked her if, if she liked it. Um, she just looked at me and said, well, no. <laughs> it was like a punch in the stomach. But I checked myself um, right there and then and I said, oh, well, it's not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> and she told me why she didn't like it, quite, quite bluntly. Um, and then she told me what she did like. And I actually walked away feeling empowered um, because I had managed to recognise that while she didn't like my book, it didn't mean she didn't like me. Her opinion didn't change who I was um, unless I allowed it to. Uh, it also made me realise that often the people who challenge you are the ones that you, that you learn the most from. Um, sometimes, however, and depending on where you're at with your, with your own self-confidence, it's not possible to detach yourself from someone else's negative response. And all it does is compound all the crap you believe about yourself. And sadly, insecurity can sometimes quash that natural impulse to express love and joy through creativity. It may even prevent us from pursuing our dreams because the voices inside our heads like us to stay where we are. So I'm just sharing a picture of me at school. Um, I think I was about, I don't know, maybe about 14. I've got my Walkman there, like I'm really showing my age here. <laughs> um, that was my red plastic Walkman before I got my super cool Sony slimline metal Walkman <laughs> um, with, the, with the headphones that went in my ears. That was like amazing. So anyway, uh, just, <laughs> just to give you um, an idea of some of my old limiting beliefs. Um, so from a young age, I wanted to be a pop singer. Um, I learned all the words to my mum's old Motown LPs. And I sang, sang, sang. I sang my heart out in the car to Madonna's first album. Um, when I was about 13, finally my, my school got um, a singing teacher. So I was absolutely beside myself with excitement. I took singing lessons and I did GCSE music. But sadly at the time, I had um, the onset of a, of a dark depression, um, which got its claws into me big time and took quite a while to shift. Um, I'd also developed um, a very impressive level of self-hatred about my body being um, a few stone overweight, two or three stone overweight from about the age of 13 or so. Um, it wasn't a good time. I was very much caught up in the voices which told me that I was hideous. I would never find a boyfriend. I would never be a success because I had to be thin. And I genuinely believed that true happiness was bound up with the shape and weight of my body. And um, so my teenage years were very insecure. And despite getting my grade five singing and an A in GCSE music, I didn't take it for A level. And I wonder, you know, I've asked myself why. Um, and I think I was afraid to push harder. And I think I was afraid of being exposed and scared of being criticized um, because I internalized deeply any form of criticism and I just heaped it onto all the crap that I already told myself daily. I was rubbish because I couldn't lose weight. Who was I to think I could be a successful singer? And ironically, um, years later, I actually developed a nodule on my voice box and my voice as I had known it before had gone. But then I sang in a band for a few years, which is so, it just, you know, it's funny how life goes. <laughs> Um, a similar thing um, actually happened to me with acting. Um, I loved acting and I was in, you know, lots of school plays uh, during the time I was at secondary school, but in school it felt kind of safe. So when I went to university to study creative arts, drama, music and writing, um, I was nervous about it because of what I might have to do. And my worst fear with regards to drama lessons was of having to improvise. So I don't, I don't know if there are any actors watching, but I just want to say, wow, you know, you're amazing to be able to do that. 
just give me a script to learn and you know I'm there you know I haven't had to learn a script for a long time but I used to be pretty good at learning scripts um, you know, I, even now, I mean, I've got my entire talk written out. You know, I don't want, I don't want to leave any margin for error. <laughs> I've got word for word. <laughs> um, but, you know, just to act um, off the cuff in front of people just makes me shudder. And um, so it was my, it was my biggest fear. Um, and then one day at uni, um, we, we had a small group activity and we had to make a video. And to get, I'm show, really showing my age here as well, but to get accustomed to using um, the big VHS cameras, that's what we had at the time, um, we had to stand in front of one and improvise. And I just completely clammed up. You know, it was our first week at uni. I didn't know the people I was working with. I certainly didn't make, feel like making an idiot out of myself in front of them. And our tutor, who was, she was actually um, an American, she was a former actor, in um, the Worcester group, she used to say Worcester, I, I think we'd English would say Worcester group. Um, I think Willem Dafoe was in it. Anyway, she, she said to me with absolute certainty, you can't be an actor if you can't improvise. And that was it. And so my voice of insecurity, which was at the time a lot louder than my voice of confidence, um, told me that of course I can't be an actor, I can't be an actor. You know, regardless of all the acting I've done, no, 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 I can't improvise, I can't be an actor. So I quit drama in the second year of my course and I haven't done any acting since. So it just goes to show people don't realise sometimes the impact of what they're saying on you, you know, the impact they can have. Um, there may be some of you here with similar stories of giving up something creative that you liked to do for fear of being no good. And isn't it sad um, to think that an important part of your identity um, has been subdued like that due to lack of confidence, <coughs> due to insecurity. Um, now I want to look at the, the, the second um, aspect of the definition of insecure, exposed to danger or risk. Um, depending on how high the stakes are when you express yourself creatively, you could be dealing with perceived or imagined risk or actual risk. Um, so perceived risks might be might include a fear of not being good enough, um, a fear of what people might think, um, a fear of being um, misunderstood, fear of criticism, fear of failure. And real risk might actually occur if you're a creative person living in a society um, where free speech is discouraged. So you might paint, write or perform something um, deemed inappropriate by the powers that be or wrong. Um, and therefore there could be actual risk. And yet painters, actors, artists, singers, writers, they do it anyway, in spite of their, the risks to their freedom, um, their, you know, their very lives perhaps, they do it because it's their way of being alive. They're driven to do it and they need to do it. So maybe it depends on the perceived risk of doing it and the risk of not doing it. So I actually, um, I don't know if anybody's heard of this, this chat. Um, I, I recently watched um, a TED talk by, um, he's an author and entrepreneur, Tim Ferriss. Um, he's, he's a chap who I had actually heard of his book, I haven't read it, but he's, he collected um, the common routines of really successful people and he put them into a book called Tools of the Titans. Um, <laughs> um, but his TED talk, he outlines a tool that he uses um, called fear setting. And essentially, it's a three step process which helps you separate yourself from what you can control and what you can't. And then you focus on the former. Um, of course, with regards to expressing yourself creatively or sharing your creative work, how, how it's received by others is actually kind of out of your control. But I think you could use the, that worst case scenario and put it through his system. Um, for example, you know, you might think like well, people will laugh at me and think I am talentless, think I am a disgrace, think I am rubbish. You, you may not be able to prevent it in step one, but what I do love about fear setting are the second and third steps, which I'll just share with you. So step two, is writing down what might be the benefits of an attempt or partial success. 
what this does is allow you to dream. It gives you permission to think of the best case scenario, which is sometimes difficult if you're gripped with creative insecurity. But, you know, what if you actually did finish that book you've started? What if you got a publishing contract? What if you were chosen for that part? What if you won that design competition? Um, I've done some um, business work actually with a fantastic lady called Michelle Walsh. She's from Derby. Um, and she always says words to the effect of, what if the next step you take is the one that brings you what you desire? It's a different way of looking at, at what if. And step three asks you, what are the consequences if you don't do it? which I think is a really powerful thing. Um, you know, what you might feel better, you might make money, um, you might gain respect and praise um, if you achieve your success. But if you don't do it, what will your life look like? What could it look like? You know, if you avoid it in six months, a year, three years. Um, when I was researching this talk, um, I came across Australian author um, and songwriter Bronnie Ware. And she spent um, many years in palliative care and used her experiences to write a book called um, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And um, in it, she identifies the following as the most common regret of all. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. She says, when people realize that their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it is easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even a half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made. So what if you don't throw caution to the wind? What if you're not brave enough? You know, what if you let your creative spirit fall by the wayside? What if you put joy and love second because you're too busy? You know, in our hearts, we know the answer. And what can you do about the insecurity that might keep you down and, and keep you stuck? Well, firstly, you know, you need to identify your limiting beliefs. Are there things that you feel you could do which would bring you joy, but you're not doing them? You know, why not? What, what are you afraid of? Are there things that other people have told you in the past, you know, or are still telling you that are keeping you down? Martin Luther King Jr. said, no person has the right to reign on your dreams. If they try, remember, they have their own dramas, they have their own insecurities. You know, maybe one day they'll be ready to learn from you. It's worth noting um, as well that when, when we're more in our, um, in our heads than in our hearts, our monkey mind, um, if, if you, you may have heard that expression before, um, it's actually, I think, originally from Zen Buddhism, but our monkey mind or our mind monkeys, some people say, um, that is the, you know, the restless part of our mind, will cling on to thoughts and repeat them. And I met, I met a lady once who called this shit FM, Sorry for swearing, but I just, I love that expression. You know, limiting beliefs can run on and on in, in our brains and they become part of us. If we don't know how to switch off shit FM. Um, and these negative thoughts can form our truth. But noticing these thoughts, you know, can help you identify the messages that you're repeating to yourself day in and day out. And once you've identified the common ones of the unhelpful ones, um, there are a few things that you can do to, to try and release them. You know, you could, you could actually find a quiet space. Um, you could use visualization and you could imagine where they are in your body and you could actually imagine them leaving you. Um, you could write them down on a piece of paper and cross them out. You know, you could burn the, the paper if you want to. Um, you could write down the, the opposite of the limiting belief as an affirmation and you can stick them up all over the place. My husband loves it when I do that, <laughs> not <laughs> find scraps of paper everywhere. Um, if the messages are coming from someone else, have an affirmation to counter them with, you know, either by saying it loud or saying it out loud or just saying it to yourself. 
because remember, no person has the right to reign on your dreams. Um, I put this slide in because I, I, I'm assuming that some of you have seen, or if not all of you have seen this film. Um, I remember, you know, watching this film, Strictly Ballroom, many years ago. And Fran, the main character, um, she doesn't believe she can, she can dance. She's stuck um, in the limiting beliefs that people have told her. You know, she's not beautiful enough. She's not from the right background. She's not talented enough. Not the right kind of person. <clears throat> and once she starts to um, overcome those, she begins to inhabit the identity of a ballroom dancer and she transforms. Um, and this, this may be a film, but truly this, you know, this sort of transformation is possible in real life too, if you can let go of what's holding you back. And this quote, um, a life lived in fear is a life half lived, um, stuck in my mind ever since. Um, there's debate, it, it, Baz, Baz Luhrmann obviously is the director of the film, but there's also um, a theory that it's an, an old um, um, proverb, Spanish proverb, I think. But I, anyway, wherever it came from, I think it's a wonderful um, quote. And it actually stuck with me, particularly at that time, um, because I was living my life with a lot of fear. Um, I was living with anxiety and, you know, a lot of self-doubt. I was coming out of a depression, sort of. Um, and very often I let those fears and those insecurities consume me. And I realised that I was stopping myself from being happy. And, you know, that was a long time ago and I've made huge progress. Um, but something that's helped me greatly with everyday insecurity and not just creativity, uh, creative insecurity, but is daily meditation. Um, and if you've suffered or are suffering from insecurity or anxiety right now, um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, I've noticed a huge difference in myself since I've started meditating. And all I mean is 10 minutes a day where you switch your mind off. You know, you can listen to a guided meditation or you can just go for a walk or just sit quietly. Um, a really simple technique, which I do with, uh, sometimes do with people who do my writing courses, is, um, is to sort of close your eyes, find, find um, not it doesn't have to be a quiet place, but where you won't be disturbed. Um, close your eyes um, and listen to the world, basically, just listen to the world. Focus on the sounds that you hear and follow the sounds. And what this does is it gives your mind something to focus on. And you'll find that thoughts will pop up now and again. Um, but if so, separate yourself from the thought. Watch the thought float by like a cloud. And once you become more adept at this, it becomes easier to do this when the negative thoughts creep into to your everyday life and try to chip away at your self-confidence. Because what it helps you to do is to separate yourself um, your, and what's real from the thought, you know, the fear. Recognize that they are just thoughts. They come from your head and not your heart. Don't put them in the driving seat. Um, a creative life, you know, demands courage, but not the dismissal of fear, more the acceptance that you'll be living alongside it. And Elizabeth Gilbert um, describes um, her own relationship with creative fear perfectly in her in her wonderful book, I'm just going to hold it up, um, Big Magic, which I highly, highly recommend. Um, she also wrote Eat, Pray, Love, which I also thought was amazing. But this is not, this is um, a non-fiction book. But um, she talks about her, her relationship uh, with fear. So I'll just read this letter out. Dearest fear, creativity and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything interesting. And may I say you are superb at your job. So by all means, keep doing your job if you feel you must. But I will also be doing my job on this road trip which is to work hard and stay focused. And creativity will be doing its job, which is to remain stimulating and inspiring. 
there's plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us. So make yourself at home, but understand this, creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. I recognize and respect that you are part of this family and so I will never exclude you from our activities, but still, your suggestions will never be followed. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You're not allowed to touch the roadmaps. You're not allowed to suggest detours. You're not allowed to fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. But above all else, my dear old familiar friend, you are absolutely forbidden to drive. And I think that's, I think that's fantastic. I just, I love the way she relates that to uh, fear sitting in the car with you uh, every time you try and create something. Um, another thing that you can do to preserve your confidence is to focus on what you're giving to others through your creativity. And this takes the spotlight away from you and onto others, which is so freeing. Um, you know, you can give so much joy to others and say to yourself, I'm ready to share my gift with the world and go for it. You know, I've had to do this about giving this talk today. Um, I've had to think about what am I giving to people so that it takes away from, you know, um, my focus on, on my own fears. Um, and think of it as, as actually a kind of a selfless act. You know, let your light shine because then others can bathe in your light. You know, channel love to others through your creativity and you will get love back. And finally, remember that your, your limiting beliefs may need a good old spring clean now and then, especially if they are deep rooted. I see them a bit um, as a, um, being a bit like vampires. You know, they can only come back if you invite them in. Make sure you're not subconsciously opening yourself up to vampires, inviting them into your, into your house. Um, if they do return, try to reconnect with your heart and get out of your head. You know, your heart's voice is the only voice that you need to hear because your creative spirit is possibly the truest part of you. It's what connects you to the earth, to nature, other human beings, magic, inspiration, dreams. So you need to learn not only to accept your true self, but to celebrate it because you don't want to reach your dying day and regret it. If you're motivated by responsibility, then perhaps you could see sharing your creativity as a duty. If you're motivated by magic, then you can see creativity as your superpower. If you're motivated by unity, then see it as a way to connect meaningfully to others. And, you know, be brave, um, start small, put a little something out there and then a little more. Control the risk by, by channeling love. Put love into whatever you create and send love to the people who read it, look at it, hear it, watch it, use it, eat it, sit on it, whatever. And above all, just do it. Create something, anything, because you can. And that is a gift to humanity. And as Andy Warhol says, don't think about making art, just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. And while they're deciding, make even more art. Um, I really hope this has inspired you to tackle some of your own limiting beliefs um, and given you the courage to embrace your innate creativity. Um, if you'd like to have a go at, that, at doing that through um, writing, I'm running a, a free workshop on the 1st of July um, and the details are, are on the screen now. And thanks so much for joining me. So I'll hand over to, to you, Tim. Thanks very much, Timmy. That was amazing. You want Thank to uh, you. Um, stop sharing your, your screen and yeah. we'll, we'll bring the crew back. Okay, we'll bring the crew back. Hang on. Stop share. There we go. Awesome. So, uh, a big round of, a visible round of applause for Sydney, please, people. Let's have a uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. That was, um, there was so much good stuff in there. I mean, with the, with the Creative Mornings hat on, um, we've got a, a manifesto that sometimes we present as well, which, uh, which starts with everyone is creative, which I think you said. And it also contains um, a, a creative life demands courage, which you, uh, which you um, 
which you mentioned also, and the mention of Walkmans. I love my Walkman. I had it for donkeys of time, which was amazing. And um, I've also found out that, that, that writing for me, I think you muted, Sibby. Sorry, I've just muted everybody, if you're oh. talking. Sorry, <laughs> my fault. It's okay, don't worry. <laughs> um, but what, I had a, a, a silver, a silver Sony Walkman me for too. donkeys. Oh, yeah. it was amazing. It was good times. <laughs> um, it was good times. But I found also that um, I've started journaling, and not journaling, because that sounds really formal, but for like free writing in the morning or when I've got stuff on my mind. And it, I'm a terrible writer, technically, but just getting stuff out of my head is super yeah. common. Like when I'm feeling anxious or insecure or worried or thinking about stuff, you know, it's yeah. really good. Um, but if it's all right, I'd like to open up to the to the audience. If you stick your hand up and unmute yourself, if you've got any questions or comments for Sibby, that'd be amazing. Now's the time to do it for anyone. Is anyone waving? I can't say. Oh, Carrie. Hello, Carrie. Go on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi there. Um, so I thought that was absolutely great. Thank um, you. I really enjoyed it. Um, for some reason, I grew up. Uh, with a level of courage that you know has never stopped me from doing any of those things so I, I'm one of the few people I suppose that it's not frightened to get up on stage and, and talk and improvise and I don't know how that happened but some obviously my parents did something right um, I'm interested because I'm aware of the fact that my son who's 21 compares himself to me all the time and rather than thinking about what he can do compared with other people his age, uh, and that's a considerable amount, he compares himself to me, who's had kind of 40 plus years of experience and making mistakes and, you know, yeah. what, how can you, um, you know, you've explained how we can address our life limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. but how can you do that with, you know, a, a child or a young person or another person? Well, I don't, I would say, well, something I've tried now, and I've got two, two kids, and, um, and I also remember, funnily enough, with my mum, I remember looking at my mum and thinking, because my mum is really calm and serene, and I had lots of anxiety growing up, and I remember looking, used to look at my mum, and I, I don't understand, you know, why can't I be like, why can't I be so calm and, you know, serene like that? And, and she, I remember her saying to me once, which I'm sure you say to your son, you know, she said, I've not always been like this. You know, she's like, I'm, I'm 36 years older than you. You know, I've had this life. Um, I mean, something that you, it's difficult, isn't it? Something that you could try. My kids are, are quite young, but I, something I think would have helped me is perhaps gratitude is perhaps looking more at my gifts and being able to recognize my gifts do you know what I mean at the time and 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 sort of taking note of those things and what was special about me and what was special about my life because I don't think I actually did that growing up but I'm discovering that more now um, and I think I, I'm going to try and do that with my children so that when things seem like when it seems like everything's against them or they feel like they're not achieving, you know, what they should be to actually just focus on the, on the, what they have got. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, th um, I think in, in my childhood, I was given a huge amount of freedom. And yeah. so as a result of that, I made mistakes and I got in a pickle yeah. and I had to kind of get myself out of it. And I think that's what you learn from. You do learn from your mistakes. It sounds a cliche, but you do learn from your Definitely. mistakes. And, and every time you get yourself out of a mess without kind of phoning mum and dad for a lift or something, which in those days you didn't do, every time you get out of a mess, it builds your resilience and your confidence. Yeah. And, and it feels that, that young people nowadays haven't had that built at school. It's almost like they're not allowed to make mistakes we're frightened of something awful happening to them and so we protect them too much and they don't learn that kind of resilience for themselves yeah i agree i think there is a lot of fear isn't there now now that with regards to our children there's a lot more um protectiveness 
with regards to our children isn't there I think than there used to be um you know I know it people say don't they back in the day we used to run around but it actually is true you know there wasn't yeah. thing was there of don't run off I need to see you all the time you know I do it with my children I need to be able to see you all the time <laughs> you know and I you can hear yourself and you're thinking just let them go just let them go but yeah, yeah. it's difficult I mean has he got has he got has he got um things that he really enjoys doing what does he really enjoy or does he feel really confident in certain things this uh, you know. uh, there, there are things he really enjoys doing but I think he doesn't he doesn't believe he's good at them and I think the difference is as a child I mean uh, creative things I mean something like accountancy you know you either get it right or wrong but something yeah. like creativity there's no such thing as a good painting or a bad painting yeah. or a good piece of writing or a bad, you just do yeah. it, don't you? Do it because you yeah. love it. Yeah. And, and I think, um, just did it for my own enjoyment. But yeah. I think again, they put too high standards about it being judged. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and it should be more about the process of it, of, of doing it, shouldn't it? It should be about the joy you get from doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think growing up and teenage and young adult, I think is a really, really tricky time, isn't it? Because even if the people around you love you and, you know, support you, actually, you can still develop these limiting beliefs. It's, it's difficult. It's a very yeah. difficult one, isn't it? Um, I think what I'm asking is not just about my son, but for somebody else, if, if we have a relationship with somebody else who we see suffering from these, you know, limiting beliefs, what we can do to support that. Well, I think, I think there's a lot of power in, in recognizing, there's a lot of power in separating the beliefs from, from yourself, if you see what I mean. That's what I found has really helped me, is actually writing them down. These are, these are beliefs that have attached, have attached themselves to me, if you see what I mean. They're not actually real. They're just, they come from elsewhere. And now I'm going to, release myself from them if you see what I mean and it's that separation uh, it's difficult with somebody else isn't it because you know you, they have to be ready to do it I suppose but if you can I suppose I, I, also, I, I do like the the thing of for every limiting belief have an affirmation you know so maybe as somebody else who cares for them for every limiting belief you have an affirmation and you say every time you think this uh, every time you this limiting belief crops up think this, you know, or have this, write it down uh, on a bit of paper. These are all the amazing things. And my lovely friend who's on this call today, um, Sinead, <laughs> um, did, did, some, did that for me yesterday, I think it was. She just sent me a WhatsApp message. These are all the amazing things about you. She knew I was nervous. And, you know, it was such an amazing thing to read, um, to just read that over. It gave me real, you know, real confidence and warm feeling actually to have something written down from somebody is a really powerful thing i think you know to actually have some words on the page this is what you are for them to then read you know if they're feeling feeling sort of lacking in confidence i don't know if that yeah, helps. thank you thank you that's good thank was there uh, any anybody else got a comment or i think i think it was jenny jenny do you want to do it and then david um, will come to you I, I was just going to say a couple of things kind of linked to what you were just talking about. Um, firstly, you mentioned in your talk about when people say things and they like stick with you. So I have a friend who um, years ago when I was at university, I went swimming with her and she told me I couldn't swim. She was like, what are you doing? That's not swimming. And literally ever since I've been paranoid that I can't swim properly. I mean, I stay afloat, but I've like, and, she, and I've told her and we've laughed about it, but like that one little comment stuck yeah. with me like the rest of my life. But then that, uh, linked to what you were saying that same friend actually recently um was looking for a flatmate and wrote this thing and sent it to me she's like what do you think and she's a, she's an accountant and she's very processed and I was like it sounds a little bit like I wouldn't want to live with you so um I rewrote it for her and she was like oh my god it's so good having like good writer friends um I love you're such a good writer and like that's now stuck with me and I'm like whoa people don't really say that to me like I'm I'm a blogger and I write a lot but it's and and linked again to what you were saying I think those little things when you see something that somebody's done that's good you need to tell them and keep telling them because you never know when that they'll often ignore you a lot of the time but then at some point they'll be like yeah. oh 
and that little thing will just they'll keep bringing it up and remembering it um yeah so it's the whole kind of be kind and be nice and just when you see something that somebody's done that's good tell them because you never know that could be the day that they finally actually listen to yeah. it um yeah. and if so you have more more of those thoughts going yeah. than the other thoughts because uh, i i mentioned this lady called michelle walsh she's a business coach but she she always says um you become what you think about so you know if you think about Possibly. all your limiting beliefs you will become that because that's what you're inhabiting that aren't you but if you think mm. about all the great things, and it's not about being big, you know, it's not about being overconfident. It's, it's just about it's just about taking note of actually who you and are. And remembering them, and like remember writing them down, all those kind of good testimonials write, yeah. or positive things people have yeah, said. Exactly. Because if you do forget them, it's so much easier to remember the negative you stuff do. than it is yeah. the positive. <laughs> Your mind just picks up on the negative stuff, like, you know, yeah. the it's FM thing. No, it does. It just goes and uh, you can get really stuck in that broken record. But yeah, I totally agree. Like tell people if they've done something good, you know, tell them. Yeah, it's really powerful. <laughs> I really, I really like that um, the the shit FM thing and the, uh -huh. like uh, Avon and David have put yeah. in the comments. I don't know if you've read the messages yeah, yet, I'm just but, them, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> like it resonated quite a lot with people. David, do you you have a question, mate? Do you want to pop up? Uh, it's not so much a question. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's just more. Um, I've recent recently I've read this book called uh, Flip It by Michael Heppel. I don't know if you've heard of it before have actually recently really recently i think i've heard of it I, it took me about about a month to uh read it even though you should probably read it in about a day it's quite a small book it's not too big um but with the kids around the house it's i was yeah. just reading it as and when when they're in <laughs> like when they're in the bath and i have 10 minutes i'll just read it but um it's all about sort of confidence uh for happiness how you can flip it so if you have feelings of self-doubt look quickly think right if i can't do something flip it how can you achieve success and one of the things was um and i've just literally seen it now and I, I, it stuck out for me was the little the, he puts little sound bites at the bottom of each page so you can sort of quickly read them and this one says don't allow any room for the wedge of doubt use other people's negative comments and opinions to motivate you be determined to succeed the only person who should decide how far you can go is you. And uh, so it's, it's called Flip It by Michael Heppel. It's very small. It's not a massive book. And, yeah, that's it from me, really. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Right, anybody else before we, we go on to the lightning talks? Anyone? I can't see any hands. Awesome. So big one more visible round of applause for Sibby. Thank you very much, Sibby. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank <laughs> you.